Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Hartley United Methodist Church. Whether you're here in the room or tuning in at home, we appreciate your presence and your worship. Uh, today there is uh, available just outside the sanctuary doors the daily devotional upper room for January and February, so please pick that up on your way out. Uh, it's a wonderful daily inspiration for each day. Um, thank you to all who ordered poinsettias. Uh, please take time to read the inserted list and who donated in honor of whom. I hope all of you who attended the breakfast enjoyed it. Uh, it was the first time we've had the breakfast since COVID, and so it's back, nice to get back into the swing of things, thanks to Charles and the men who helped uh, get that ready for us. We appreciate that very much. Following worship today, there will be a brief special conference led by our district superintendent about whether we'll approve an adjustment in the salary so all official members stay put after the service. Uh, it won't take very long, I don't think, and then we'll go to coffee hour following that meeting. Um, don't forget that Saturday the 24th at 7 p.m. we have our Christmas Eve with communion and candle lights and how to honor Christ this Christmas season. So we'll look forward to that. Um, and we also want to thank those who make the coffee hour possible because of the breakfast. There'll be a bit lighter this week, uh, but it will still be there. There's to be at least some coffee and a few treats. So please join us at the other end of the room after the worship or meeting, depending on if you're staying for the meeting or not. Um, Jim Cleveland is in our tech booth, our thanks to him. Uh, Donna Allman, Kathy Novak, and Jewel are on the instruments. Our ushers are Jeff and Linda gordon -Ear. Our lay reader is Ben Williams. Also participating today in the cast, it's written in your bulletin, but I'll mention their names anyway, Terry Priest, Ben Burt Honor, Carmen Pushman, Charles Kirkpatrick, Michael Charlo, Sarah Williams, subbing for Jerry Weaver, and Mary Jo Bell, who also wrote the script. Our catch-up campaign is now up to $6,465. You can see it over there on the thermometer. Uh, thank you for your generosity. We still have this week and next week to go. So let's see how red we can make that thing go. See if we can pop up the top, okay? Which is at 10,000 is the top. So we've got to get 10,001. All right, anyway. Today's money verse comes from Matthew and James with a bit of commentary mixed in. Proclaim the message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the message of Christ in Christmas. Freely have received every good gift and every perfect gift which is from above. And what gift is more good and perfect than Jesus coming to us in a manger to die for our sins and open up a way back to our Heavenly Father? Every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights. Freely you have received this, therefore freely give. Remember to give your filled out prayer request slips directly to the ushers as we now collect the morning offering.
God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Almighty God, you bless us with so many gifts, including Christ himself. We offer you ourselves, in part signified by these gifts, these resources that we share through this church, that we may bring your goodness to your world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing for the call to worship and first song. Come. Meet with Christ and experience his gracious compassion as well as his disciplined self-denial. Both needed in order for him to give up heaven to come to us in a manger and leave the manger to go to a cross. And from the cross's tomb, he comes to us again today. Come and worship that we may travel to the manger and be filled with his grace and discipline, that we may carry on his mission of love for people. Let's move to the manger then with the angels to sing the wonder of creation and of Christ appearing to us, angels from the realms of glory. Angels from the realms of glory. The wise men are called to seek what every nation desires, a king that acts as a cornerstone that securely binds us all together. So let's prepare for the Advent candles by singing just the verse and invite the one who created us to deliver us from our sin-caused conflict. Let's sing. the handle of hope to remind us that God brings comfort and healing. We lit the candle of peace to remind us that God calls us to love and be at peace with all, all that we meet. We lit the candle of joy to remind us that God sent us so that we can remain in his love and our joy will be complete. God of love, we praise you for you look with favor on us, your servants. 
Your mercy reaches all who revere you. You lift up the humble, you satisfy the thirsty, and fill the hungry with good things. As your holy and dearly loved chosen people, fill us with your compassion. With your kindness, your humility, your gentleness, and patience. By your help, we will demonstrate controlled tolerance and forgive each other as you forgive us. People, say it with the psalmist. We read with me. We will erupt with praise and give thanks to you, Lord, for your loyal love, your miraculous mercy, and all the wonderful things you do for all of us. On this fourth Sunday of Advent, we light the candle of love, for it is, for it is this virtue that binds everything together in perfect harmony. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. So let's pray. Lord, we come from all walks of life. Some of us are traveling over rocky roads in treacherous times, while others of us are traveling with joy over peaceful paths. We come with a wide variety of experiences, perhaps even just during this past week. But we're very near Bethlehem now. Some gather, finding it difficult to celebrate, while others arrive with hearts overflowing with elation. Whatever has been our journey, our circumstances, We are coming to your manger now. We are coming into your presence, relying on the promise that you are always with us in every situation. And as we come, we pray with thanksgiving for the lives of those whom we have honored and remembered and named through flowers, and those for whom flowers were not or could not be purchased, but we are still ever grateful for the impact they have had on our lives. We continue to pray for a relative of Jan Martin, Darlene Tidmore, who is very ill, for Jan's brother, Reese Thornton, for Mary Jo Malott's sister-in-law, Colleen Huffman. We also ask, uh, Bert Honor asks for his friend Dennis, who is suffering with cancer, and Terry for her parents. His mom has rebound COVID. And there are others who are under the weather today for various reasons, and we're praying for them as well, and others that are not named but are on our hearts and minds. Now as we visit the stable, rejoice with us or comfort us in the light of your love, the love of the Prince of Peace who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Psalm 146 is gives us some of the reasons that we rejoice that God comes to us. Join the pastor on the yellow font while I lead on the white. I will praise the Lord as long, long as I live. Blessed are those who have the God of Israel as their helper, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He created the heaven and earth, the seas, and all that lives within them. He stays true who and keeps every promise. He remains faithful forever. He upholds justice for those who are pressed down by the world. He lifts up those who are weighed down. He loves those who do what is right. He protects the foreigners among us and sustains orphans and widows. The Lord will reign reign today, tomorrow, 
and forever. He will be your God, people of Zion, throughout the generations. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The psalmist says we are blessed to be able to depend on him, the ever faithful help of the Lord. In everyday life, if you have an emergency, if you need help, who do you call? Don't say Ghostbusters. <laughs> who do you, hmm? If you're in England? No, I didn't say, no, you're right, 911. I just, well, I just thought I'd add those extra, if you're in England, it's 999, yeah. So know where you live. <laughs> yeah, so we, we use the cell phone, we pull it out, and when you call that number, are you just going to hope and pray that somebody might happen to be there to answer it? No. no. You expect somebody to be there, right? Yes. It, 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 unless something goes really wrong with the system or something, uh, you expect and there will be somebody there not only to answer your call and listen to whatever your problem is, they will probably offer you some words of comfort and strength and help you through that situation, and they will send the right people to your place if needed, right? So they'll send the power company or the fire trucks, firemen or policemen or medical people or whatever your need might happen to be. Among other things, Christmas reminds us that when we pray to God, we don't have to hope and wish that he's listening we know and can expect that he will be there with us. And he sends to, he doesn't only just listen, and he gives us words of comfort, and he takes action. He sent Jesus to us, ready to give us his peace, his forgiveness, his help, his gentle guidance. And in our modern context, sometimes he sends Jesus to those in need through Jesus' people. That's us. Did you know you were a spiritual fireman? Policeman, medical person? And we are to do what we are able to do. But you also may know that even when there's not an emergency, all those personnel that I have named and others spend a lot of time in the community trying to do preventative preparation so that those kinds of tragedies and emergencies may not come as often or as severely as they may come. So when we aren't doing emergency work, for Jesus, we should be doing preventative work for Jesus, helping each other, encouraging each other with our presence, growing into maturity in Christ, and perhaps avoid or at least better cope with some of the stressful challenges that come our way during our days. We don't know how much foresight into this kind of detail the Magi knew about this coming and helping when they saw the new king's star appear in the sky. They only knew that they had to go and see. The gifts they brought seemed to indicate they had some inkling of the kind of king he would have to be if he was going to have that kind of impact on our world. But let's turn it over to the dramatist and let them tell us that story. Donna's going to play a minute while they set up and the credits roll on the screen. And I get out of the way.
What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Whom angels greet with anthem sweet while shepherds watch our keeping. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh, come peasant king to own him. The king of kings salvation brings, let loving hearts enthrone him. him. Raise, raise a song on high. The virgin sings her lullaby. Joy, joy, for Christ is born, the babe, the son of Mary. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Nail spear shall pierce him through the cross he bore for me, for you. Hail, hail the word made flesh the babe, the son of Mary. How many ways have you heard the story of the birth of Jesus? In the Bible, there are many pe people with experiences from that night, Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, and the Magi. They were all from different backgrounds, and yet each played a significant role in that night. The Messiah came without fanfare, without anything you would have expected from the Son of God to receive upon his arrival. But who was this child? What was the purpose of him being born, and what did it mean for the world? We're going to hear today many different stories, but mostly of the Magi and what role they played in the beginning life of Jesus. The way Jesus entered the world was not what you would have expected for a Messiah. Joseph, a carpenter, and a young girl named Mary were simple, honest, and faithful people chosen by God for the incredible honor of being the earthly parents of Jesus. However, this was not an easy task for them. You see, they were only engaged to be married when Mary became pregnant with Jesus through the Holy Spirit. It was a trying time for them, but they placed all their faith and trust in God and his promises. They followed and believed that God would see them through. I 
I am frightened for the Lord I bear, and I wonder at a stone. Must I walk this path alone? Be with me now. Be Do you wonder as you watch my face if a wiser one should have had my place? But I offer all I am for the Have you ever thought of the night that Jesus was born and what it all really means for us? Have you wondered what you would have done if you had been there to witness the birth of the Messiah? Would you have been filled with wonder of the event or fear of the unknown? Joy for the birth or terror for the change that was sure to come? Would you have been like the Magi and followed that star in the sky to see what was at the end of it? When would you have understood the magnitude of what his birth meant for the world? Could you make a place for this new Messiah in your heart? Would you have made room for Mary and Joseph in your home if they had knocked on your door?
They journeyed far, a weary pair. They sought for shelter from the cold night air, a place where she could lay her head, where she could give her babe a quiet bed. Was there no room, no corner there? In all the town, a spot someone could spare. Was there no soul come to their aid? A stable bear was where the family stayed. Do you have room for the Savior? And do you seek him anew? Have you a place for the one who lived and died for you? Are you as humble as a shepherd boy or as wise as men of old? Would you have come that night? Would you have sought the light? Do you have room? A star arose, a wondrous light, a sign from God this was the holy night. And yet so few would go to see the babe who came to rescue you and me. This child divine is now a king, the gift of life to all the world he brings. And all mankind he saves from doom, but on that night for him there was no room. Do you have room for the Savior, and do you seek him anew. Have you a place for the one who lived and died for you? Are you as humble as a shepherd boy or as wise as men of old? Would you have come that night? Would you have the light do you have room will you come tonight will you seek the light do you have room Late, <clears throat> excuse me, late in her pregnancy, Mary and Joseph traveled from Nazareth to Bethlehem for the census. It was a long, hard journey that took them several days. When they arrived in town, they discovered that there was not one room or suitable space for them to stay. One kind innkeeper took pity on them and told them about a small stable that they could use for shelter and rest. It was there, the most humble of all places, that Mary gave birth to the baby Jesus, the Messiah, the King of Kings. This was perhaps not the way we would think he would have entered the world, but it symbolizes that Jesus was born for all mankind. Don't know what to say when I look in your eyes. 
made the world before I was born. But here I am holding you in my arms tonight. No way. Herod the Great ruled as king of Judea under Roman authority and was also called the king of the Jews. He began to hear about this new Messiah that was to be the king and it made him fearful about his stature. I must find out more about this Messiah. I am king of the Jews, not him. Am I being replaced? Will others follow this new king and not me? Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star and have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply troubled. He feared that the one called Messiah, also called king of the Jews, would be more powerful than he was. He saw this new king as a threat to him and his rule. I need to find out where this Messiah is. I cannot allow him to challenge my rule. He called together his scholars and priests 
and asked where this child was to be born. He was not pleased with what they said. They told me the child would be born in Bethlehem in Judea. And the prophets said, but you Bethlehem in the land of Judah are by no means the least of the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a king for, that will shepherd my people from Israel. What does this mean? I cannot allow it to happen. Herod was more paranoid than ever, and he devised a plan. He called upon the Magi, Balthazar from Arabia, Melchor from Persia, and Gaspar from India. These Magi, otherwise known as wise men, were a special class of priests in the Persian Empire that had been around for a long time at least since Daniel was appointed to be their leader by King Nebuchadnezzar. They were religious professors, philosophers, and scholars who were highly educated in many fields, including religion, astronomy, and even astrology, which is why they noticed the new bright star in the sky. Herod spoke to them about the prophecy and the star that had appeared in the east. He needed to know if the prophecy was coming true and that there had indeed been a new king born. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report back to me so that I too may go and worship him. The Magi did not know that Herod was lying to them about why he wanted to know where the child was. He certainly was not looking to worship him, but to kill him. He was filled with a great fear about his own power if the prophecy were to come true. So they did as they were instructed and set off to find the Messiah. They followed the star that had appeared in the east. Seeing the star shining so brightly over the place where the child lay, filled them with joy because it meant hope for salvation in a time of darkness. It was a long journey to Bethlehem, but as they traveled along the road, they rem remained intent on finding the Messiah so that they could worship him. They knew that this child was not like any other, and so they each brought along a gift that was fitting for the king. For none. 
nothing was like anything they dreamed anticipating the royal and those honored by this world instead they gazed in the awestruck eyes of a lonely peasant girl holding her child come let us adore him oh come let us adore him oh come let us adore The brilliant gold, the fragrant myrrh, and the costly frankincense placed before him. Come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore. I am Balthazar, king of Ethiopia, and I have brought a gift for the king. It is called frankincense, and it is obtained from a tree by making an incision in the bark and allowing the gum to flow out. It is used in religious and spiritual rites, and it's also the symbol of holiness and righteousness. When burned, it is fragrance is so strong that it is used as a religious offering to signify Christ sacrificed. I am Melchicor, the king of Persia. I have brought the gift of gold to the new Messiah. Gold is beautiful and long lasting. The gift of gold represented Jesus as a king with an everlasting throne. It is symbolic of his divinity and is a treasure benefiting royalty. I am Casper, king of India. I bring the gift of myrrh to the child. It is collected from a tree much like frankincense. Myrrh was a spice used for medicine and as an anointing oil. It is mixed into an oil and used to anoint prophets for the divinely appointed work of revealing God and communicating his will and words to his people. It is symbolic and this gift is an indication of Jesus' humanity. The wise men were in awe of what they had seen and they were humbled in his presence. As they were on their knees in worship, they felt the magnitude of the work of God and what the birth of this baby, the Christ child, the Messiah, the Savior, meant for the world. The Magi played an important role in the beginning of Jesus' life and in the Epiphany, the manifestation of God to the world. Once the Magi were finished in Bethlehem, they prepared to return to Herod and tell him of what they knew about this new Messiah. However, in a dream, they were warned about Herod's plan for Jesus. 
they decided to take another route home to avoid seeing Herod. By doing this act of faith, the Magi spared the life of Jesus and ensured our salvation. Well, I guess we are wise men. Should we sing in the song that we wrote on our way here? I don't know if that would be wise. After all, we haven't rehearsed at all. Oh, come on, we can do it. After all, we just deceived the evil Herod, saving Jesus and all of mankind. I guess you're right. Yeah. Were the three kings traveling from afar? Were Caspar, Melchior, and Balazar? We're searching for the king who was prophesied, but now we're on the longest ever camel ride. We're the kings who traveled afar. We've been riding all night and been riding all day. We gotta have something to show the way. The prophet's been saying through history, a style will show you where the king will be. We be the kings who traveled afar. He, he's the one, God's only son. Now we have come. On our quest to find him, show us the way, by night and by day, lead us to pray, to worship him, he is the one. The world has never seen a king quite like this. He hasn't come for war, but to bring us peace. He's come from a line of royalty, and we will be the first in line to bow a knee. We're the kings who traveled afar. I am not going to wrap the closing blessing. Sorry. <laughs> if you're able, let's stand for it, though. Now, having seen the baby Jesus through the message of the Magi, now enter the world with his word in your hearts, peace in your minds, his love in your deeds, for the good of all people. Amen. 
Members, please remain for the meeting. The rest can stay and listen only if you'd like, or you can go ahead and get a head start on coffee hour at the other end of the building. Thank you. There'll be a little bit of music while we transition to the meeting.